Hello, who are you and where are you from? Hey, I, uh, my name is Mike Allen. I'm a fishery scientist and director of the Nature Coast Biological Station here at the University of Florida. Wow, hey, thanks for meeting with us. And uh, what a, uh, so has the climate changed much uh, for you personally as a growing up? Is it, is it different now than it was when you were younger? Yeah, for sure. Now, I, have a, I didn't grow up here in the Gulf Coast. I grew up in Texas, but in, in the 25 years that I've been frequenting this area and working here in Central Florida, I've seen big changes in, in the climate, with, mainly with regard to species different distribution changes and weather patterns, um, both. Um, you know, now we have mangroves everywhere in Cedar Key. Um, black mangroves, red mangroves, and the truly tropical uh, white mangroves. Um, are here now and so we can see very evident effects of a warming climate as well as sea level rise here locally. Oh wow and uh, well let me follow up on that one a mm -hmm. little bit and, and, and there are they taking precautions locally for uh, climate change? Well I think that's our biggest challenge really is is uh, is how do we how do we promote resilience of communities that are going to be affected by rising sea levels and changes in weather patterns um, and there's a lot of active research going on on that from our team and others at the University of Florida and across the state um, right now. Things like differences in shoreline stabilization strategies to try to protect shorelines from coastal erosion that happened with storms and rising seas. Um, infrastructure protection for houses and, and municipal structures. Um, all those kinds of things we're working on actively right now um, because here in Cedar Key we are on, on an island um, very low um, and, and used to dealing with flooding but it is becoming more and more of a problem for sure. And, uh, and they are taking, I mean, is the key taking uh, your advice uh, with the shorelines? The community's heavily engaged with our researchers here on how they can try to mitigate the effects and, and, and withstand as long as we can um, the rising seas and, and keeping the community here. I so, see yeah. your building here is on stilts and uh, it is. concrete stilts. Yep. And uh, built, what, 18 feet? above yeah it's the, actually 21, 21 feet now feet. Okay. and um, and yeah this building was built in 2017 and so it was with FEMA regulations which we're subject to as well was built high to withstand and everything on the ground floor of this building is intended to flood it's all it's all meant to be able to to flood and then put back together so all of our office space and everything is up um, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, 10 being the most concerned, where is your concern for the climate uh, in the future? I would say 8. I mean, in our part of the coast, our sea level is rising faster than in just about anywhere in the world. One of the fastest in the Gulf of Mexico here in Cedar Key. Um, we see strong evidence of sea level rise all the time. And we're a community where if the sea level goes up a foot, it's going to affect people's livelihoods and people's homes on a regular basis. And so I would say, yes, it is a major, perhaps the most major concern we have about living and working in this part of the world. And then finally, uh, what about the future? Are you optimistic or pessimistic? And is there anything we can do about it? I am optimistic in the fact that I see the uh, the community pulling together and looking at mitigation strategies and trying to, to use some science to say what are the best ways that we can adapt to the rising sea levels um, and the increased frequency of storms which are also part of that because sea level rise and storms together are what um, is, is the real risk. Um, but I'm optimistic about how I've seen the community respond to those kinds of things and, and uh, shoreline projects. Um, different construction projects to try to mitigate effects like that. So I'm optimistic there. Um, a little bit more pessimistic about the long-term outlook as far as being able to reduce greenhouse gases enough to make a real effect on reducing the rate of sea level rise. Uh, I hope that we can, but of course that's, a, that's more of a global uh, phenomenon and we can each do our part, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an even bigger challenge than, than the local mitigation efforts. Wow. So both optimistic and pessimistic. I would say both. Yeah, it's interesting when you ask that question, that's the first thought I had is I, I have both. I see some reason for optimism 
and I see some reason, reason for long-term concern. Well, very good on this, the 21st of August here in Cedar Key, Florida. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Hello. Uh, as usual, uh, right after the interview, uh, I, I follow up with a question and uh, I get some a great answer that uh, really needs to be added. And uh, you were mentioning that uh, 50 years from now, uh, possibly 2070, mm -hmm. uh, Cedar Key will be operationally very hard to live on. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the climate projections as far as sea level rise in this part of the Gulf, it's it's a foot to 18 inches higher base sea level rise by 2070. And that's not the, the most pessimistic outcome and it's not the most optimistic. That's kind of the average prediction. Could be better than that or could be a lot worse than that. But if you add that much um, uh, water level on a town that is, sits this low, it's going to change the dynamics here. It's going to affect people's property on a very regular basis. And it's going to make even the small storms have a much bigger impact on our area. So, so um, you know, we've got big challenges on a little island like this in the Gulf, like so many low-lying areas in Florida. Big challenges coming. Thank you very much. All right.